In this video we're going to talk about annuities and recurrence relations. We'll start by talking about an annuity. An annuity is when we have an investment or loan where regular repayments are made. So I'm going to demonstrate this using two examples. One will be an example of an investment and the other will be an example of a loan. So for both examples we're going to start off with the same principal or, or present value. Let's say our present value for both the investment and the loan is going to be $2,000. Meaning for a loan that we owe the bank $2,000 initially, or for our investment, we initially have $2,000 of our own money sitting in the bank. Let's also have an interest rate that's the same for both. Let's say that our interest rate is 5% per annum. And we also need a repayment. Now the symbol for repayment is capital D. Let's make our repayment $400. I would actually like to start with the loan. So initially we owe the bank $2,000. And then at the end of the year, they're going to charge us interest. They're going to charge us 5% interest. Now, 5% of $2,000 is $100. So we're going to have to add an extra $100 to our loan in interest. But we're also going to make a repayment. We're going to pay off $400 from the loan. So we need to subtract that, subtract the $400, which now comes to $1,700 at the end of the first year. How would this look for an investment at the end of the first year? Well once again we start with our present value of $2,000 and the bank is going to instead of charging us interest it's going to give, give us interest. So we're going to add on the $100 of interest again. What's different is the repayment. Our repayment is $400 for an investment, we actually add it on because we're trying to increase our investment. We're not trying to pay it off. We want more money in there. This one will come out to $2,500. So what we notice with our investment is it increases. It goes beyond the $2,000. It's an investment. And for our loan, it decreases. It decreased down to $1,700. This is a loan, we're trying to pay it off. What do we do when we come to the second year? Well, looking at the investment, we've got to think to ourselves, how much money is in our bank account? We started with $2,000, but we now have $2,500. So we need to start with that. And when we calculate our interest, we're actually going to calculate 5% of what's in our bank. 5% of 2,500, not 2,000. And 5% 5 of 2,500 is $125. So what we see is that our interest has increased slightly. Our repayment stays the same. It stays as $400. And when we add these together, we get $3,025. What's going to happen with our loan? What are we going to start with here? Well, we now owe $1,700, not $2,000. So we're going to start with our $1,700, and we're going to calculate 5% of that. And 5% of $1,700 is $85. You might notice that our interest has decreased, which is good. We're paying off a loan. We want our interest to decrease. And, of course, we're also going to make our repayment of 4 hundred dollars. This comes out to $1,385. Now I'm not going to keep going on with these calculations. These calculations can be very tedious and take a long time as you progress to the third year and also to the fourth year and beyond. The main thing I want you to remember is that as you work through these calculations each time you look at the result from the previous time period and you use this result to make the next calculation. If we were doing the third year, 
we would use the result of $3,025 from our investment. This is the same for both the investment and also for calculating loans. Each time you take the result from the previous period and use it to make the next calculation. This brings us to what is known as a recurrence relation. A recurrence relation uses the previous result in order to find the next result. So the calculations we were making here are called recurrence relations. And we actually have some formulas. We have a formula we use for an investment and we have a formula that we use for a loan. Now when people look at these formulas, they quite often become overwhelmed and confused. Now I'm going to break down how these formulas work in the next example. But I do want to point out something that might look familiar to you. For example, for the investment, you'll notice at the end of the formula, we add the repayment. And for the loan, at the end of the formula, we subtract the repayment, which is what we did here. Remember, for the investment, we added the repayment of 400, and for the loan, we subtract the repayment of 400. So when we get into the next example, we're going to show you how what we did here, the calculations that we made here, are actually exactly the same as using the formula here. Anyway, that concludes this video introducing annuities and recurrence relations. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.